let's get some analysis on this uh, by bringing in Collins Nweke. He's an African affairs analyst and joining us live from the Belgian capital, Brussels. Uh, Colin Nweke, thanks for being with us here on TRT World. So, in your opinion, is the AU going through something of an identity crisis? Well, uh, I think it would be fair to uh, uh, call it an uh, identity crisis. Um, but, of course, um, uh, quite um, a large chunk of, um, you know, the uh, challenges facing the AU is uh, are actually things um, that are in their hands, things that they can, uh, they can sort out if only they could be uh, more purposeful. Um, and that has uh, that has been the issue uh, since uh, since the, the formation. Of course, the early years were you know a huge success uh, in the sense that um, the coming to being of the organization of Africa Unity was occasioned by uh, colonialism, um, and so uh, you know they helped um, other African countries to gain um, you know independence and did very well. Uh, and then necessitating the formation of uh, the African uh, Union. But uh, since then, of course, the continent has been ripped with all sorts of, um, you know, uh, challenges. And uh, either as a consequence of uh, helplessness or ineptitude, uh, they have not quite been able to, um, you know, deal with those uh, uh, issues. Uh, of course, uh, there are a number of opportunities that uh, they haven't managed to, uh, you know, take uh, advantage of. Well, we'll come on to some of those opportunities in a moment, uh, Collins. But I wonder if that is part of the problem. You mentioned the the number of issues facing the AU. Is that part of the reason as to why they struggle to deal with them? There are just too many things, too many um, problems on their plate at the moment that they can't deal with and too many competing um, agendas. Absolutely. Um, of course, you will always have uh, many issues, uh, but how you deal with them in terms of uh, strategic planning is uh, very, very important. Let's take the issue of um, you know, uh, incessant uh, uh, military takeover of uh, of power in Africa, for, for instance. In the past decade, there had been, um, you know, 43 uh, attempts uh, to seize power uh, with the barrel of the gun. Um, 11 has succeeded. And the uh, African Union does have uh, some sort of a convention on how to deal, uh, you know, with such issues. But, um, you know, in the end, you actually find the African Union officially cooperating with, uh, you know, those that, uh, that seize power, rather than having a zero tolerance, you know, on that. Of course, uh, we have seen situations where, you know, they are suspended from the African Union and all of that. But those are mere tokenisms. I think they've got to now go beyond those tokenisms and begin to actually clamp down, isolate, you know, even before, because, I mean, people, uh, countries don't just, uh, you know, uh, seize powers. Uh, military doesn't just seize powers in country. You have strong indications, you know, in the run-up to seizing of, uh, of power. So they should work more on prevention. And when it does happen, as in some cases, um, you know, it's inevitable, they've got to, uh, you know, actually ensure that such countries, you know, such governments are isolated and, uh, you know, they should refuse to, uh, to work with them. And human rights, of course, is a very, very strong uh, issue. Corruption is at the, you know, at the heart of it. And so when, uh, there are quite uh, a, number of, uh, a number of things. Like you said, uh, the opportunities are there. And I think they need to now begin to think of how best to, um, you know, zero in on those opportunities and use them to sort the issues out. Well, Collins, let's go on to then, finally, to the uh, opportunities. I wonder if you can just lay out some of the areas you think that there can be more cooperation between the nation states of the AU. I, I wonder where you place uh, the climate crisis and dealing with that on their agenda. Well, the, the, the climate uh, crisis is, uh, is an issue, but uh, you, as you can, uh, as you could see from what uh, happened in, um, you know, in, uh, in Scotland, um, they, have, uh, they have played their own uh, part, but uh, they happen not to, um, you know, they appear not to see it, uh, you know, as, uh, as an urgent crisis as much as uh, the rest of, uh, of the world. But that apart, uh, let us, uh, you know, talk about uh, international uh, partnership uh, that is open to uh, to Africa in terms of, um, you know, uh, youth unemployment because that is a huge issue. Now, um, the issue of um, youth unemployment is something that Africa, led by uh, the African Union, has now got to, um, you know, uh, make out a, a Marshall Plan to ensure that uh, young people are kept uh, in Africa 
one of the ways, and perhaps the most viable way to, uh, you know, do that is to, um, you know, cooperate uh, more internationally, not just on getting the, a sorry, the EU, uh, the United States, and uh, other uh, advanced power to actually uh, fund their budget, but to ensure that they set up shop uh, in Africa, taking advantage of, uh, you know, the abundant, uh, you know, um, uh, natural resources out there in Africa, so that jobs are created uh, on the ground, and, uh, you know, also ensure that the corrupt leaders are, you know, clamped down on, and uh, using uh, international bodies like, uh, you know, the World Bank, uh, the uh, United Nations to ensure that uh, defaulting uh, Western countries uh, that are actually aiding and abating uh, the corruptions are blacklisted and also were uh, penalized, just like uh, their counterparts uh, in Africa. So once all of those are done, I believe that uh, more opportunities will be created uh, in Africa, of course, using also the African Free Trade uh, mm -hmm. Agreement, which has gone, um, you know, uh, advanced uh, stage. I think uh, the tide could then begin to uh, turn around. Uh, well, we do appreciate all your analysis and expertise there. Collins Nweke, Africa Affairs Analyst in Brussels. Thank you for your time, sir.